What's going on guys? I'm Chris and this is Regular Guy Training. So let's talk about Parker Mount Machine and their compensator. I picked up the barrel and compensator a little while back to address a couple of things that I'm going to talk about here. But, I, but before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to start with this. Those of you that have wanted me to come out and teach more in uh, Picky in Mississippi, in Florida, in uh, Kentucky, that kind of stuff, Classes for all of these places are actually up. In a couple of weeks, we're getting ready to do a handgun set. More classes will be forthcoming after that. A uh, bunch, uh, bunch of extra stuff is coming up on the website and that kind of thing. Link for that is in the description below, as well as our Patreon. Now, if you want to support us and help us out through all of this nonsense, that absolutely does help. But if you want to get something out of it, $41 a month gets you as much training as you want out of us. Make sense? You know, it, it's a killer deal, and I, I would have killed for it if, when I started training a lot back in the day. So, there's that. Now, let's talk about this. Typically speaking, you know, when people are talking about, you know, putting a compensator on a carry handgun or on a duty pistol, or those are the same thing, there's a lot of things that you do have to consider. For one, a lot of people um, are about, you know, five, ten years behind on the compensator game to where back in the day, it used to be a little bit of an issue because a lot of times you would, you know, hear about, you know, compensators robbing too much energy from a recoil operated system. So therefore you'd have to spring down, powder up, do whatever it is that you got to do. The technology has improved a lot since then. And there frankly is not much of a reason to not have one, especially if you carry a light on a handgun. Because at this particular point, you know, I'm, I'm using this in conjunction with a light so it makes everything the same length so i'm not giving up anything as far as space right so that is what it is now talking about the compensator itself the design for this i believe is very very smart especially when we're talking about the gen 5 handguns because a lot of times when you when guys will bolt on um, different ma different manufacturers of different compensators it's basically like trying to bolt a shoe box onto a handgun slide now that doesn't that isn't much of an issue if we're talking about you know like a, a square cut type compensator or a rectangular type cut uh, compensator on like a gen 4 glock where the, where the slide is very square but when we start talking about the gen 5 guns when we start talking about you know the glock 26 starting from gen 4 and that kind of stuff with these cuts okay if you put a square type or a rectangular type compensator out front, you can have a couple of compatibility issues, not just with like concealed holsters and that kind of stuff, but with things like the very, very popular, you know, Safari Land ALS. I have seen guys before, and I have myself, got caught on the retention system of that because there's just a little bit of air between the slide and the actual compensator. So that turns itself into a slight problem, mostly because you know, what's this thing on here if I'm starting to have, you know, holster issues? Like, what's the point? You know, so for the Gen 5 guns, I believe that Parker Mountain Machine came up with a very, very smart solve. Now, obviously, this isn't threaded all the way on, but you can see that the compensator itself indexes itself over the top of the slide when the gun is in battery. And the cool thing is, is that the underside of the compensator indexes itself inside of the dust cover when it's when during the firing cycle so when the slide is all the way to the rear the bottom side of that compensator is indexed into the dust cover now this is very important for a couple of things if this thing comes loose what tends to happen uh, for a lot of compensators is that if they come out of time you could then have holster issues right and because you had a bunch of stuff on that comp to start with you know like get a bunch of red loctite or using rubber o-rings and using set screws and that kind of stuff it's you can't like hand move it back into place and again this defeats the purpose of having it now because i have holster issues so even if the the thing comes loose it stays indexed and timed correctly into place which i think is extraordinarily smart the next thing that's great about this is that it installs like a regular mus uh rifle muzzle device all this really uses is a combination of their barrel, right? Your basic, it, the installation videos definitely do exist. You use your barrel, the flats on a, the flats on a wrench and the compensator itself, take a vise and you can basically bolt this all on together. Now, a couple of ways that uh, this is retained in the place without things getting too tight is that much like a regular muzzle device, we have a regular washer system that gets thrown in here. Not like a crush washer, but like regular spacers, right? 
I'm adjusting my vocabulary on, on what people call these a little bit for the layperson. But Parker Mountain ships a whole bunch of these things in different widths so you can figure out what combination of them uh, will work for your particular compensator and barrel setup. They are thoroughly aware that even if they manufacture their own barrel and compensator, just based off of threat, you know, thread depth and that kind of stuff, you know, how far that shoulder f uh, sits away and that kind of thing, and, and wear patterns on guns and blah, 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 blah. They, they recognize that, you know, when we're talking about bolting something down and getting this as close to the slide as possible without it causing, you know, battery issues, you know, they give you the adjustability for that, which is great. You know, that and it's, it's just smart practice. You throw, in a you throw in a bunch of those spacers into the compensator itself, you thread it on, and you go from there. The installation videos exist, they're really good, I'm not gonna get into installation. But the fact that this installs like a regular muzzle, uh, rifle muzzle device is very, very helpful as well. Okay, there's other good designs that are out there that don't install this way, like I personally really like how KKM does their setups, mostly because, you know, the, the sets, they use set screws, and those set screws screw into flats that are on the barrel itself, which makes it pr pretty impossible to make the thing come out of time if you install it right, which I think is just fantastic. Um, we actually have one, um, Josh does, on a Glock 20 that he turned into a compensated 10 millimeter special. The thing is huge, and it's so good. It's so good. Um, point is, though, is that while using this, okay, um, I don't have to worry about it coming out of time and installs like a regular uh, rifle muzzle device, which is great. Um, I personally used a bunch of red Loctite to also, you know, thread lock stuff into place because this is not a reverse threaded barrel. It's a standard threaded barrel, which is something that I wish more people would do is just do reverse threading, right? Especially if you're going to work off a spacer system like this, because all it will do at that point in time is I'm already tight. It's not going to come loose now ever, right? But I recognize that not ever that not everyone does that, so you know, jump off that soapbox. That said, bunch of red Loctite so that there isn't a combination of like water, salt, and heat that'll you know unlock my thread locker that is used you know for like things like rock set and things like that. So the high temperature red Loctite is just gonna basically make sure that this thing is welded into place, and then I'm gonna need a torch to take it off, which obviously is not the hardest thing in the world to do. You know, it's like a low power torch, so you can use a soldering iron and just let it sit there forever. It's not hard. Point is, though, is that like once it's on, it's friggin' on. And even if you break loose the thread locker, it will index itself back into place. The reliability portion of this is something that I will continue on, but there's a reason why I stayed on this so long, because if I can't carry it, there's no point in having it. And this makes it to where you can carry it, even if it's loose. I don't recommend you letting it get loose, but even if it happens to get loose, that redundancy is very important to me, okay? So there's that. Let's go ahead and talk about the barrel itself, because obviously this is a part of it. I mean, it mechanically speaking, it's very accurate. It does just fine. It's it, There's nothing really to report on it. I had very Glock accuracy coming out of my Glock with my Glock barrel. Done, okay? What is kind of cool, though, is, and this is just a recommendation, is that if somebody sells a compensator, buy their barrel also, because where your threads end and where that shoulder begins could be important on where that thing sits in relation to your slide, right? So you don't want it jutting out a little bit too far forward because you're out of design spec now and you might have holster issues and that kind of stuff that we talked about already. This barrel with this compensator, they made up very, very tightly as if it was one unit rather than a thing I clearly added on to my handgun, which is very important because I don't have, you know, slides biting on the holster issues, none of that stuff. Great thing also. Now, let's talk a little bit about performance because I chose the single chamber compensator for a reason. And the reason I did is to keep this guy, okay, to where I can stand this on its nose, okay? The reason why this is important is, is the simple fact that, look, if my compensator is the same length as my light, I'm not giving up anything to carry a compensator, okay? Because a lot of people are sitting there like, oh, that's extra long, oh, well, or they just don't understand that carrying a gun doesn't really mean being comfortable. It means carrying a gun that'll work all the time, that'll give you everything that you need, okay? So if this is as long as my light is, I'm not giving anything up. 
at all. Okay. Now, now it's important to note that if you have a closed front holster, you may want to reconsider that because either you're opening it up for the compensator itself or you're replacing the holster. I tend to use open front holsters just because, uh, number one, there's nothing that really gets caught in them, right? Like casings and that kind of stuff because casings just find a way inside of holsters even if they're concealed. On top of this, you know, I don't have compatibility issues with stuff like this. So, when we're talking about that, that's something to note, obviously. Now, with this, bolted to this, we have a couple of questions to ask as far as performance is concerned. Now, A, you know, does this in fact rob a ton of energy from the gun? And B, does it actually do its job? Now, A, starting with B, yeah, it 100% does its job. With 115 grain like target ammunition, um, I noticed a little bit, a little bit of a recoil impulse decrease, meaning like, well, felt recoil impulse decrease to where it's like, okay, it's, it's nosing the gun down a little bit, cool. And that's important because if I can feel it, or, or if I can tell that it's there uh, with the weaker quality stuff that I use in just day-to-day -day practice, it's going to actually do its job when I am using defense loads. As far as defense loads are concerned, this actually does a really good job at that because I mean, as far as, you know, just recoil impulse on 147 grain, you know, standard pressure stuff, or if I'm using plus P or plus P plus, uh, I noticed that there's more jab for sure, but it's still flat. Now it's a little weird because you notice that it does jab a little bit at you, but it's still straight to the rear and I'm not flipping all over the place and just great, uh, which means it's hundred percent doing its job 100% of the time. As far as shooting in the dark is concerned, I've shot with this and this a lot in the dark and, um, you know, between that and, you know, just standard crown barrel stuff, there's no real noticeable difference in flash ever. I, I don't know why this is still a thing that people worry about, but there's no real noticeable flash. As far as night vision goes, it's the same. Uh, the only thing that I did notice is that under low light stuff, uh, and that's because this is venting in an upward direction. I do notice a little bit more smoke. Is this really a problem, right? Like, am I having trouble seeing things and all of that jazz? No. No, uh, unless you're so blind that you can't see exactly two feet in front of your face, like a shade in front of you. It's not a problem. It's never been a problem. Uh, so, and if you're the type to where if it starts like smoking up a lot in front of your face and you're like, oh my God, I can't see, move. So, I mean, it's, it's whatever. Point is though, is that it, it doesn't take anything away, which is awesome. You know, it's, 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 it's so good. It's boring, which is fantastic because it didn't really cause any issues. Now, can you spring down and use it? Sure. You absolutely can. If you want like a super duper flat shooting pistol and you, and you want to downspring a couple of pounds. Yeah, sure. But does this work with re with OEM recoil springs? Absolutely. It does well with them. It doesn't cause any issues as far as locking to the rear and that kind of stuff, which leads us into energy robbing. Uh, I picked a single port, not just for length, but I also didn't want to rob too much uh, energy from my slide when I'm using standard ammunition, well, standard, lower power target ammunition uh, in like 115 grain and that kind of stuff. I didn't want to cause lock to the rear issues or none of that. And the cool part is that this doesn't with uh, with the one that I've used, and that's this guy, right? I don't have a ton of data on their, on their dual port comps. I, I've watched them used a couple of times. I didn't see any issues, but that's not enough for an opinion. So don't take that as a review. But the single port guy, it works great. Uh, I haven't had any functional issues from it. Uh, any functional issues that I have with the handgun is just because I beat the brakes off my equipment, not because this is hanging on the front. Um, so that's important because it doesn't cause me any, any annoyances when I'm just training, which is great. So, you know, I'm not care I don't have holster compatibility issues. It indexes itself off of the slide and frame when it's in and out of battery. Um, I don't have a lot of those little nangling issues that a lot of people have with like set screws trying to walk out or any of that nonsense. It's just a solid piece of, piece of equipment and I would recommend it to anybody looking for a compensator on a handgun that's supposed to be carried in one fashion or another. So that said, that's really all I have on this. If you guys want to check us out on Facebook, you absolutely can. 
Links for that, the website, and the Patreon are all in the description below. And remember, a regular guy's firearm is the last defense against tyranny. Easy.